very good afternoon all of you today we have ms diksha vats with us the chief sustainability officer of aditya billa group for this edition of immersive talk diksha very warm welcome to you for this session so today's session will focus on climate change as a whole but with a little bit of specifics around climate change adaptation you know aditya billa group has been a forerunner when it comes to you know climate policies actions as well as disclosures for the last two decades almost so i would like to understand a little more from you uh what has changed you know post paris agreement and how that has impacted your vision as a group and your actions so if you can just give us a little more understanding around it that would be very helpful thank you thank you madhura for uh, inviting me to speak here uh so as you asked me about yeah as a group we been um, we been working on various aspects of how climate change uh is impacting us and how clim- we are impacting climate change because when we talk about the whole term of sustainability uh especially vis-a-vis how the term sustainability in ESG over last few years have been started to used interchangeably i thought it's important to uh put this out there that how both external factors and externalities need to be taken into account when we talk about any aspect of uh, sustainability and as abg we've defined sustainability as our ability to sustain that how will we be around in times to come and therefore what could come in the way so from risk perspective uh, from different uh, you know bigger smaller mega trends that are playing out and also of so how do they impact us and how do we impact them both in terms of risks and opportunities uh, climate change has started to speak for itself but now in last few years very we can very clearly see how the changes are closer home you know whether it's in terms of uh flooding heat stress uh too much water too little water uh so one is understanding of that and i guess because of that the way a uh, global elite is being looked at so you talked about paris agreement and therefore what is coming out of uh more formal conversations like conference of parties this um, last year we had the 28th meeting and uh, i guess it's in paris where it uh, started to become more uh, tangible in terms of what was expected uh, the tangibility at the global level which got converted to tangibility at the national levels uh, both in terms of regulations in terms of what are we expected to comply uh, and uh, what could come our way if you we do not comply but also what are the opportunities that would come our way if everybody is to comply so that's how we started to look at it uh, that we need to be more structured around it we need to have our own uh, uh, policies standards targets and then once you have policy standards and targets uh, it also leads to having road maps which have milestones for which therefore you need partners of various kinds whether partners uh, for technology partners for uh, implementation partners for communication partners for policy advocacy so whatever goes into implementing a road map uh, i would uh, i would uh, kind of leave it at that uh, when you ask about how we look at the whole aspect of climate change yes right this is very interesting to know because you touched upon risks opportunities as well as you also talked about regulations i just wanted to understand from you because the entire aspects of risk opportunities the kind of regulations we have they vary from adapt- mitigation to adaptation you know so so do you consciously as a group you know uh bifurcate between climate change adaptation mitigation and if yes then at what stage do you bifurcate is it at the policy level or at the investment level or when you take action i mean is there a conscious bifurcation between climate change adaptation action and mitigation action uh, aditya birla group we are present 
in almost 40 countries. Uh, we have close to 200,000 employees now and we are in very diverse sectors, you know, heavy manufacturing like cement, aluminium, chemicals uh, at one end and then, you know, carbon black in the middle. Uh, within aluminium, we have a very integrated business where we do mining, of mining, refining, smelting and downstream. Similarly, in cement, uh, mining of uh, limestone to uh, clinkerization and then cement making and then we have ready mix concrete. So given the diversity of sectors, given the diversity of geographies, given that we play in different parts of the value chain and given that different businesses have been at different level of maturity uh, in terms of sustainability practices, we use these four dimensions to talk about what is our approach what we're calling the 4D approach, where the four dimensions are sector, geography, position in value chain, and time as fourth dimension, which is how much is elapsed, so therefore how mature are we, and how visionary are we, so how much are we looking ahead. This is something which we made public in early 2021. And Madhura, there itself, when we are saying climate change is a, uh, is a very material issue for us as a group because of both in terms of how we make and what we make, but in in you know so so and also in terms of the kind of products and services which would help economies or some other businesses become resilient in uh, terms of climate change. At that stage itself, that we've got two distinct. Uh, environmental areas, one being decarbonization. So how do we bring down uh, the carbon footprint for which we've, we're talking about a longer term goal of net zero by 2050. We've also talked about where we are yet to have a quantitative goal in that sense, but we are talking about uh, climate change uh, adaptation because climate has changed. You know, if you look at the data that came out last week, uh, 2023 has broken all kinds of records in terms of the physical risks that, uh, uh, that are playing out and would uh, ha are now already impacting corporates. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the climate has changed. We've been talking about 1.5 degrees, but 2023 temperatures were 1.43 degrees higher. So we're almost at 1.5. Uh, if we are talking of expanding in certain locations, how will the water availability, temperature profiles, geophysical risks going to be in those locations? So that's how we've started to look at uh, the whole uh, issue of climate change that both how do we stay in that uh, that temperature? You know, how do we? How are we contributing to uh, mitigating that increase in greenhouse gases? Both, by the way, what we do in our energy consuming businesses, but also by the way of our Aditya Birla renewable energy business. So that's an opportunity because we are into the business of solar power. Uh, and then also from that climate has changed. So how do we uh, kind of mitigate that risk or manage that risk and also help through our products, companies in managing that risk. So from all those perspectives is how we are looking at the issue of climate change. Thank you, Diksha. I think in fact, the question that I had in mind for you, the next question you have partially answered that. Uh, I was actually trying to understand that if we talk of adaptation and globally we have seen that you know uh, companies have mostly invested in mitigation and not so much in adaptation because they don't see the return on investment we have seen several I mean, based on different other surveys that we have looked at so yeah. maybe i'll just try to understand from you uh, so what is the trigger for industries to act on adaptation and when should they act should they act now or you know at a later point in time in future. So uh, so that's one of my questions. And then why should they act? Is it the risk that you talked about or the opportunity, you know, that's there? Or is it a you know combination of both? 
So, Madhura, I think, um, in a way, the, uh, you know, the answer lies in the question that you asked. Uh, and also in the, the context that we've been, the context of climate change, the way it's playing out at this point in time. Uh, how we looked at it is that, first, let's go by data. You know, this is something which we did for when we started our work on biodiversity as well to say, uh, how do we make it real you know uh, because it's very otherwise it can feel that it is something in the future who needs to do it where do i start we have 200 plus locations and if we were to include uh, some of our critical suppliers uh, the number could go to close to 300 that you know uh, these are the locations where at least from manufacturing perspective if you would look at it uh, could face some kind of physical risk because climate is changing. So we worked with a, uh, with a expert organization uh, where we shared, actually this is the consulting arm of a insurance company, where we said, could you help us understand through your uh, tool, which is where the data sets are actually coming from IPCC's model to say, you know, uh, if these are the geo coordinates, and this is the kind of operation that we run there, or in some sense, this is the value at risk in that location. What is the risk? So can we put some number to it? So uh, that's one study that we did last year, where uh, and and you know what does the risk mean? So what are those uh, in that terminology? What is the peril? that would play out. So therefore, how would they play out? We did that assessment and some of it actually tallied very well uh, with what we'd been seen happening at some of these locations because we did have some locations which over a period of time, whether, you know, uh, let's use example of the cyclones that came in Arabian Sea in the last uh, two, three years. There, there used to be no cyclones in Arabian Sea uh, in the past, but we've seen a few of them happening now. So what happened with those? How, what played out? Uh, what uh, Was there too much water? Was there too little water? How did we deal with it? So, corroborating what we are seeing through a desk-based study with what we saw playing out at some of our locations helped us think through that had we known some of this earlier, what would we do differently? What will be the actual impact of it and who is responsible for it in the organization? And then comes to your point to say what is an immediate action versus what is a longer term action to, to park it like that uh, and ultimately it is also about cost so uh, so what is at risk what can be what is immediately correctable uh, what can be corrected if only uh, we were to uh, expand in that location for example it, it is not really possible to uh, bring down say all your stacks and saying we are going to build new stacks and you know versus to say that if if this stack was impacted by wind speed and wind speed is going to go up within this range what are some things that we can be prepared for if a cyclone is going to get announced in next five days how will we secure those roofing sheets how do we uh, reroute the water how do we prepare for some operating actions, some may require uh, capex. So that's from risk perspective. For example, if we had to rebuild a structure and we ourselves thought as a cement company that this is a new type of concrete which now I have used. How do we go back and market that concrete saying guys, this is a climate resilient concrete or by using a lighter material like aluminium, you're better off. Or, um, you know, uh, this is how uh, we, you, you, we work jointly with some EPC companies to say, this is a good way to redesign stormwater management systems. And we are happy to share it with the 
industrial development cooperation in the area very interesting riksha but then i know a question that was not you know i mean i was not prepared to ask but this kind of your last uh, few minutes kind of trigger this question in my mind i just wanted to understand that do you see a market when we talk about a new kind of concrete or a new kind of product you know i mean do we, do we see a you know a market already available for aditya birla companies or you know we need to develop that market we need to develop that awareness amongst people so that the market grows in future i would say at this point in time madhura latter because uh, these are all conversations uh, these are all thoughts that have emerged uh, which uh, have not been shut down immediately because said, wow that makes sense so they been picked up as very logical opportunities as well uh, much like uh, what started to happen with circularity uh, slowly i think it would happen with because uh as i said in the beginning that uh, climate has started to talk for itself so it is very obvious that uh, uh it may cost less lesser on an irr basis if you were to uh make your structures using a climate resilient concrete then it would if you were to rebuild everything there was a story in one of these uh, one of these american newspaper or magazine about only one house stood uh, after this hurricane in that whole of florida coast and uh, when they went back and checked it had been made with a you know uh the the thought had gone into the design and also the selection of construction material uh when they made that structure uh but to your point to are people aware uh maybe somewhere in the subconscious but is it a common place conversation dances Tell me one thing, Diksha. That historically, when you know, you've seen that when we talked about adaptation, at least when it comes to large-scale infrastructure, it's the government that played the most important role, the most prominent role. Yes. Now, you know, now that you are also trying to understand, assess the risks and opportunities, you know, in different locations, and also the fact that when we talk about a flood or a cyclone, it's not just that particular location where you are operating. it's the entire yeah. water basin that is getting affected so we are yes. talking about large gaming of stakeholders who are finally involved in the whole thing government mm-hmm. to start with then we have the communities who are residing there then all the supply chain members so you know role of collaboration will play a very important role going forward if you have to really take action around adaptation so so what should be the you know as per your experience what should be the or you know like not only one model what are the models that we should look at when we start collaborating and if you have already collaborated then what is that model that you have so far used thanks uh, madhura and i think that's probably one of the most uh, uh, overwhelming thing about what's playing out at this point in time uh, that you know everybody needs to collaborate with everybody uh, it's like i was saying in one of the sessions at cop i don't know if you've seen this uh, oscar winning movie which was about everything everywhere all at once so i said uh, that in uh, climate change adaptation it is literally going to be everyone every doing everything all at once uh, and which is a very a uh, very hard thing to do because uh, we don't have any models to fall back on any proven models to fall back on uh, because this literally requires uh policy makers industries finance providers community uh, leaders just about everyone that you know policy makers i i, I don't know maybe repeating to come together so there's lot of this pressure 
that it needs to be done very quickly and everybody needs to come together and it doesn't help that we are in some sort of what we are calling a poly crisis that you know there is war and there was a pandemic and then you are talking about climate change and there's so much inequality all around because uh, not everybody speaks the same language so i guess it would need to we we'll have to come up with some newer models and one of the things which i think is in that stage that you know it's testable is to say not worry too much about how quickly we are going so build from bottom up to say that uh, it worked for us here in this part of gujarat at this location and therefore how do we expand it and it may also help if we were to get a push from center on this is how uh, large scale procurement will happen so that's what i mean when i say everyone everywhere all at once because it requires that very multi dimensional multi stakeholder ways of working but fundamentally collaboration and patience both would be needed that you know and and maybe even a uh, leap of faith so that's how i look at it understood and so this very well elaborated and explained and staying on the same lines diksha uh you know i just wanted to understand that the way of working when it comes to climate change has changed over time you know earlier we were looking at you know see for example energy saving measures you know was one of the most important sustainability measures at one point in time but now we are looking at more capex intensive in certain cases more opex and capex intensive measures so and where we do not see a return in the shorter term and so how do you think the role of sustainability team and you as the chief sustainability officer has changed over time i mean are you looking for a more collaborative governance framework a more you know i should say comprehensive framework where you talk you know more frequently to the ceo or the ceo or or you know a collaboration you know we talked about other core stakeholders yes you know, yeah the organization collaboration inside the organization you know is that is that important and how is it taking place you know or or, or anything that you think should change now you know the way we operate as an organization to make this happen so that is another thing i had in mind you know so if you can please explain through your experience so the answer in one word is absolutely because you know uh, for one it brings that uh, integration because you know you walk the talk you can't say everybody outside would need to work together but we will not because what you also need to understand here or i mean what i mean by you is that we need to understand here is that the more collaborative we become externally the more collaborative we need to become internally because different people bring different skill sets and networks when it comes to collaboration because the counterparts of external stakeholders would be different internally as well so everybody needs to come together and therefore to have a uh, this is for sustainability colleagues it is a very important trait uh that you are this collaborative empowering secure individual who can give out this message both verbally and uh, with the way you work and kind of behave uh that the world is changing uh it is very interdisciplinary very collaborative so we would need to go together i am not trying to do your work i am going with you because it so happens that i am the face of some of these conversations another thing which you may have heard me say earlier is that the ultimate goal of a sustainability head should be to make themselves redundant 
so all of this how uh, how uh, that uh, is playing out uh, is what um, sustainability people need to understand and then act themselves accordingly and uh, get the overall ecosystem to get comfortable with that way of working very well explained diksha you know i'm, I'm I, this explanation will help others also who will listen to this interview uh my one last question you know because you have been to cop 28 i wanted to understand like what are the outcomes that resonate with your thought process and if there are outcomes that you think you know uh, kind of are not so you know i mean are not meeting your expectation that way so yeah your two bits on the on the outcomes of cop 28 so madhura i went to cop uh, after a very very long time so i've been uh, kind of one of those uh, skeptics of it uh, and all i can say is that i'm glad that i went uh to be able to collaborate coming together uh, for conversations like this allows you to understand the diversity of perspectives diversity of expectations diversity of solutions that there is no one problem therefore there is no one solution and that it would be a be combinations of bespoke things uh that comes out very well in a cop like situation so i think that was a fantastic thing so because it is um, Uh, it is such a diverse multi stakeholder uh, conversation on the backdrop of a just transition uh, that th- this is very hard but what would have made me happier is if the if the feeling that one got of uh while people were speaking lot of diverse things but were people listening to all diverse things i'm not so sure because uh, in many conversations i felt that people kept saying what they wanted to say without taking cognizance of what others had to tell them uh you know for example that some countries need to take faster action but if those countries don't have the kind of uh, uh financial resources uh, but have large populations have uh, you know the the backdrop of social media everybody knows what's happening in which part of the world so you can't say oh sorry you were born in a poor country Uh, with less resources uh, at a wrong you know, wrong time wrong place in win the birth lottery therefore uh, continue to live the way you are that's not going to work anymore so i think that uh, understanding hopefully should increase as we get into new or this thing but having said that i think uh, overall uh, i think it's a positive thing to to kind of get together like that and see how we can uh, slowly and steadily uh, get on to uh, to make changes thank you diksha i think this particular conversation has been very positive at least for me a climate change specialist you know like me when you say that you know adaptation action is not something for future when you say that collaboration among stakeholders is an absolute necessity this gives me a lot of hope you know as as a climate change professional and i'm i'm very very thankful to you to kind of emphasize because you have emphasized on these very very important points and you have done it so openly and i'm sure that this will help a lot of stakeholders or climate change you know professionals like me to take things up more uh, i would say with a lot of rigor you know from now on i'm very very thankful to you diksha for this session this is extremely insightful and i have at least learned a lot as an individual thank you thank you for the opportunity madhura and um, thank you to the pwc team thank you